Hi, I'm 13 Disciple, and this is Coach's Corner. Welcome back, guys. Um, today we are looking over a replay from Tactical Noob. We are playing on Mannerheim line, and we are in the WZ111 5A. Okay, so let's uh, let's take a look at the team lineup here. We have a 277, a 705A. I'm, I like to look at the heavies first. Um, there's no Artie. No... Artie. So that's that opens up the map quite a bit for you. There are three Steves. Well, we're gonna talk about where I expect to see them. And then there's just a lot of other tier nine heavies that we'll be able to pin. Okay, so we're gonna struggle to pin the 705A unless we can get the lower plate. Um the 277, the upper plate, we can uh we have better gun depression than him as well. T1 104 is a little bit scary. They have high alpha, so we don't want to be trading one for one with them. If we're going to engage, we want to make sure we get two shots for one. Everything else, not too scary. So let's talk about where we would go in this lineup. There's really two good options here, to be perfectly honest. Um, you can sweep up around this way, play this corner, and then sweep down through here. And then from here, we can go this way or this way. Alternatively, you can go down to the heavies and play this little ridge here. And you can actually play behind this rock as well, too. So one thing I want to point out with this one is that you have great gun depression, or I should say better gun depression than, than you'd expect in a, uh, in a fast heavy that you have here. Um, so actually playing this ridge is probably a really good idea. Although, because their tanks are relatively slow, they won't want to push all the way across here because then they're just going to get pegged from this tank destroyer area here. Many of them will stop at this rock, they'll stop in these dips, or they'll hug this corner here, or they'll stay back here. Very rarely do they ever commit down in here because it's a death trap. It used to be, uh, prior to 1.0, not too bad to brawl down there, but nowadays it's really hard to get in there safely without taking damage. Personally on this, I could go either way. I could see going into this match going south or north, and it'd be totally random on how I feel like playing. So uh, STRVs, there's probably going to be an STRV here and probably an STRV here would be my guess. And then possibly back here if you end up winning this side here. So make sure that you predict where they're going to be and be careful about it. If someone pops up here, they can spot you crossing into this position, which means you could take STRV damage from here. So don't dilly dally in the crossing, just push across. So that's kind of where I would go in this situation. Let's take a look at uh, at where we play here. If you guys are interested in having your replay featured on Coach's Corner, down in the description is going to be a link to my Discord channel. In there, you'll find a, uh, a channel called Coach's Corner. And in there, I'd like you to submit your replay from uh, uh, whatreplays.eu. And maybe a little brief descriptor about it. Uh, help me kind of ground on what you're looking at or what you're thinking. Uh, I generally ask you guys to send me your most average replays. That's where I can help you the best. If it's a bad replay, they're usually too short to really give you better advice. Uh, and if it's a really good replay, then there's not a whole lot to correct you on. Okay, so you have a lot of heavies going south, which is expected. And okay, so we see their 277 down there. So going up here is probably not a bad idea. It gives your team a more even split. So this is still a pretty good call. Your bat chat is crossing. There's a 430 down there. Not too scary of a tank down there. I'd probably just push in. Um, so the 5A has the characteristic of being very fast, okay in armor, really good DPM and good alpha without great gun handling. Or I guess I'd say acceptable gun handling with reasonable gun depression. So by squeezing into the right here, you can take advantage of your good gun depression you can take advantage of your DPM. There's a VK4502B. I'd probably be loading gold for his mantlet in anticipation for shooting him in the turret. Well, okay, so that was the micro play there. What you needed to do was shoot that guy in his lower plate. He exposed the whole thing to you practically. Um, but I get you wanted to snap off a shot and get safe so you can back up as quickly as you can, but just taking like a half a second to move your cursor this direction might have given you 490 damage there. He still takes a hit and you bounce around. That was lucky. 
Your angling has been okay. You're getting a decent amount of assist. Your team's actually punishing that VK pretty well for being how far back he is. See so you checking your surroundings. So what I'm doing right now is I'm looking at the minimap to see how they're split. We see a heck of a lot of tanks down here. What hasn't been lit? We have one STRV not lit, a Progetto, and the 705A, which could be around this corner, might not be, but otherwise everything else has been lit. So pretty evenly split still. 705A in the middle of the map, that's unusual. It's not a play I would have expected. This is good, you're using your gun depression. So AP is not too bad if you aim a little bit lower or if you try, so the AP shell might drop a little bit into his hull, but you need to hit his hull. You're gonna struggle to pin his turret uh, with uh, AP rounds. I see you loading heat. You don't carry very many heat rounds, I respect it. Um, so when it comes to deciding your ammunition loadout here, a lot of people will just do what good streamers tell them to do. You don't have to do that. What I recommend you do is kind of start off with what you think you'll need. And then after a match, if you run out of a particular shell type and you still have extras of a different one, then move them. So if you get to the end of this match and you go, oh, I ran out of my heat shells, then I would maybe move another four AP shells into heat shells, right? And that's how you can kind of dial in how many shells of each type that you need. Heat was a good call. Just missed the shot in the 120. I'd be surprised if that VK comes back. He's been punished pretty good. So I see you're pre-aimed at this uh, Wizzy here. So one thing I want to point out, if you drive maybe a little bit to, to the left here and kind of come in at this angle, you might be able to hide more of your hull than you currently are hiding. Okay? Because like from his perspective, it's kind of hard to see. But like you're exposing a majority of your tank here, right? So if you can, I mean, if you're if you don't have a target to shoot at, and you're not currently brawling. It's helpful to try and reconfigure your tank in a, in a better position to where you'll likely bounce damage. Okay, this 705A is just in the middle of this crossing. Look at him out there. That's that's interesting. I would not have expected him to be way out there. And he's he's not in cover either. Okay, so what I'd probably be doing right now is doing is turning around and looking for shots at the 705A that way. I'd be looking for to get that gun out of the game. Because he's kind of in the middle of a giant crossfire right now and distracting your Udes from helping you in front of you. Helping you battle the tanks in front of you. Even though they've backed off to a point where they're just not gonna be able to get shots from the Udes anyways. Yeah, I'd definitely be turning around and looking for shots on the 705A. You can... Okay, so I just want to point out another... Oh, let's see if I can zoom in here. Probably not. Okay. Oh, that's a nice little... Okay, so you see that this his hull kind of does this shape here. Right? And then rolls back this way. If you hit this corner below the front plate, I know it's a lot smaller than what I've drawn here. You would have penned this, or if you hit his mantlet in here with heat, you'd pen the mantlet. As long as you can avoid the gun, you'll pen this. You can also pen this commander's hatch. Um, I, I see you're trying to get a snapshot out and then get safe as quickly as you can, but getting him out of the game is worth taking a hit of damage for. So I probably would have taken the hit and aimed very carefully and made sure that I, that I killed him. So. Just another, point that out. You lost your bat chat behind you. You're now in an overmatch on this side. So you've got four tanks versus two with maybe one supporting, right? You have the 705A in the middle. You've got these guys here. So by coming down here, you, you can get shots on the 705A, but you will be exposed to the Leo. But by getting this 705A out of here, you can then allow these guys to come across, right? They won't push across, if he's if he exists because they're just going to end up getting shot at so to dig the rest of these guys out what you really need is somebody to kind of come up here and turn their turrets 
um, or you just need to brawl extraordinarily well. Alternatively, you can sweep down through here and come up here and get shots on these guys. Anything in this nest, you'll proxy. So really pushing the game forward is lynching on taking out the 705A in the middle of the map. Reloading heat again, not a terrible idea. If you aim more to the right, you might have had his outline there. Your team looks like they won the south pretty handily. There you go. Uh, lower plate? Yeah, see, so you should have had that shot. You maybe weren't, um, you were tunnel visioning on the Wizzy. If you're too far zoomed in, zoom out. If you're waiting for damage, zoom out and make sure that if you expect that there might be someone trying to push up from another angle, you need to be able to see them on your screen as quickly as you can. So 140 took that hit. He should have tried to secure the kill, but I think it was the Progetto that hit him. That wasn't too bad, actually. <clears throat> if that shell had dipped, you would have killed him, probably. Yeah, that 705A is still in the middle of the map, and he needs to get dug out of there. I'm surprised the 140 hasn't turned around to try and do it. Lower plate? There you go. That was a good kill. It was smart to take that gun out of the game. Is he 120? Damaged your gun. Had to repair the gun. Good job. I'd still be looking to take out that 705A right now. He's preventing your team from coming across the map and getting more pressure in. If there was artillery on this, your your heavies would probably be getting pounded into scrap metal right now. Because you guys are taking so long to take the map control. I see the T30 is pushing in to try and get better shots on the 705A. There you go. That was another good kill secure there. So we took out two tier 9s um, without taking any damage. That was good trades all around for sure. You probably could have done it sooner too had you had uh, a little bit better um, micro firing there. I see you're pushing through. It's a pretty bold choice because you don't have any support if you get caught out. Although the only thing not lit now is this STRV somewhere. So actually it's not a horrible move to push through like this. I would still be curving into the left in order to go towards that 705A right now. Because he's just totally in the middle of the open, completely exposed. And no one's getting shots at you. Where are they all hiding? I'd probably be sweeping through the middle of the map because you'll have more fire support as you find things. There you go. There's the 430. Oh, he's doing a great job at hiding his tank. So one thing I want to point out right now, you bounce the shell, that's good. You missed your shell, that's rough. But here's the difference in this exchange. Okay. All you get to see is his turret. All right. That's going to be almost, it's going to be really hard to pen that. He has a very slim profile and it's going to be really hard to damage it. Okay. Now on the other side of this is you, right? And he has shots on your entire tank. So he's got a much better chance at penetrating your hull than you have at damaging him. So you have two choices right now, especially since you just fired your last heat round. Switch to HE and just pepper his turret down if you can, or leave. And in this instance, I would probably leave because me hitting him with HE and him penetrating my tank is not going to be good trades. It's going to be bad micro trades. Alternatively, you could just drive at him, but you might end up in a crossfire with the Progetto and the unspotted STRV. So I wouldn't be trying to brawl this 430 anymore right now. I'd probably be relocating because it's just not going to be winning trades. As exemplified. I mean, you have plenty of hit points. You haven't really done a whole lot of mistakes up, up to this point, to be honest with you. Just a couple of micro trades. But this is one of those instances where you can see what you're up against and realize, you know what, I'm just not going to win these trades. You need to go find somewhere else to be in a more favorable position. You should never feel stuck, especially in a in a heavy tank like that. I see you did switch to HE. That was very smart. That was a good call and one that I would have made too if I wanted to stay and keep playing this area. Almost hit him there. You're still trading okay. He's still pretty nervous about facing you. 
I'm surprised your Udez and STRV aren't pushing in. There you go. 297, that's actually a pretty high roll for an HE round onto his turret. You must hit the top where it's thinner. Yeah, I'd still be trying to take the middle of the map right now. See, you're just, it's going to be really hard to trade one for one with this guy. Does he get another shot in? He does. Are you permatract here? Oh no, that's going to be pretty awful. It looks like you're going to be able to get out. There you go. You got out. Good. Oh, you poked back in. <laughs> Run away. He's hit you for, what, four, 340 and 429, and you've only done 200 some damage to him? 297, you've done 300. So he's winning this trade right now. Yeah, you need to find somewhere else to impact this game, because you're just not... A tier 10 taking this much damage from a tier 9 is not good. That tier 9 is punching up above his weight because of his positioning. Not to mention that this tank isn't all that accurate, so you don't really have the accuracy to be brawling here either. Remember, if you're if you're ever like just not making you need to repair your ammo rack here, bro. If you ever feel like you're just not impacting the match, find somewhere else to play. Whenever you're reloading, waiting for something or anything, look at the minimap. This Progetto is somewhere in this area, I'm sure. The only other place he would be is back here, otherwise he'd be shooting you, right? And you've got a bunch of tanks in the middle. If you just go this way and poke up maybe this ridge, you'll have more impact and possibly side shots. There you go, you did another 230 damage to him. He has still done a lot more damage to you than you've done to him, which are not good trades. You need to change your macro positioning to find a more favorable area to do good trades in. Did he ammo rack you again? That's a bummer. Yeah, I'd still be trying to relocate here. Hmm. He realized that he keeps getting peppered by HE around, so he's left, it looks like. Now that 705A is up in the sniper's nest. Time to go somewhere else. Yeah. Always be thinking about what macro play can you do to give you better micro plays. Because this micro play isn't working in your favor. You've lost half your hit points and you've only achieved like 500 damage for it, which is bad trading. You can do that 500 damage on a high roll in one shot against somebody else. That PTA is up in the sniper's nest here. Like you'd have shots on him if you're down here. I mean, it's all right. You'll 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 get better at your micro plays uh, as time goes on. The 430 hasn't been seen in a while, so we know he's backed off. I see you pushing through. This is a good play. You should definitely support your Udez as he takes a, a harder position and I see you've switched to AP. No, you still have HE, I think, loaded. There's that 430. Not too bad. If Actually, if you go down into the dip to your right, you can dip down in there, and then you'll have hull down position poking up to your left. You see the 430 is relocated. You can just push in. Like, he's not in front of you anymore. There you go. That Progetto's in the middle of the map for some reason. Like... If you had been down here, we would have known a lot of this information much earlier. We're going to lose an STRV to the Progetto. See, now they've po they've pushed out, and they're not in crossfires because we gave up all this middle map control. A lot of the time, once I've won this area, once I've won this area, I will then scoot down in here almost all the time. Very rarely will I continue to push through here. Because they have that haul down where that 430 was down in here. And pushing down this way just puts you into a crossfire, right? I almost always go down the other direction. 
There's a lot of one shots on the board. This is still a winnable game for you guys. You just got to be very diligent in what you're shooting at. I'd be trying to eliminate the 705A right now. And you're not going to be able to. Oh, uh, you might be able to do it. With the HE. You missed. Okay. So I see that you. You missed your shot because you're trying to snap it. After you took the hit of damage from him, you should have just aimed it. You had plenty of time. He wasn't going to reload, although it looks like the STRV behind you has got the shell coming straight into you right now, which might kill you. But you had, you think you should have realized that you had enough time to aim that shot. That almost killed you. You're, to you're toast now. You've driven into a crossfire. Like I said, <laughs> that's, that's my point. Going this way drives you into a crossfire. Oh, yeah. He weighs a lot more than you. You're not going to be able to win that, uh, that ram trade there. Okay, so you backed out. That's all right. So yeah, the bottom line is, is uh, once you've kind of won this area of the map, definitely look at the mini map and decide if it's going to be better to push in through this direction and through here, because pushing through here will put you in a crossfire and crossfires mean that you can't angle your armor correctly and you're not going to make good trades. Always try to avoid a crossfire if you can. And by not coming in through here, you've allowed these guys to stay alive. You've allowed these guys to push out, right? It's not your fault that the game, I can't, I don't know if it's a win or a loss, but it's not solely on your fault, but you could have, this is one of those instances where I think that had you made better plays, you you could have made the difference in winning this game for sure. So Tactical Noob, thank you so much for sending in this replay. Um, guys, I will catch you on the next Coach's Corner. Thanks.